Hello and welcome to the first episode of Athlete's Journey, Winning On and Off the Field, a special podcast series looking at the financial journey of athletes through the eyes of some of this country's most influential sporting figures. I'm Brent Reid and today we're joined by North Queensland and Queensland Maroons Rugby League legend Jonathan Thurston and Essendon AFL icon Michael Long. Welcome, fellas. Well, thanks, thanks Reedy. Yep. Let's start nice and simple. T- t- take us into your background. How did you get into rugby league, JT? Um, yeah, so my mum's one of 13. Uh, she's got nine brothers and uh, three sisters. So uh, growing up as a kid, uh, we played footy. Uh, Dad played a little bit of local footy as well. So uh, rugby league was uh, very prominent in our household growing up. So it all started, you know, when I was four, five, six years of age. So, yeah, that's how I got into it. What about you, Michael, AFL? Yeah, yeah, all um, families in Darwin. Um, my dad grew up on the Tiwi Islands as a kid. Um, so footy's always been in our house, household. So it's seven boys, two girls. Uh, dad coached. Um, he's a bit of a local legend up there, Dad. So we had no choice as a kid <laughs> growing up at the St Mary's <laughs> Football Club. You um, had to play for the mighty Green and Goal. Um, and the Dad uh, obviously was Grown up on the Tiwi Island, so there was a lot of Tiwi people who come in by plane. Dad used to fly himself in before they moved to to Darwin. Um, but Dad was always a loyal, passionate, uh, and he coached the St Mary's Football Club. Um, he um, he coached in 1974, but the cyclone came. But uh, obviously that year was cancelled. And then um, yeah, so it's probably um, I think um, from a family we've played about a thousand games collectively. Um, and then there's collectively with all the boys we we played in about 44 premierships uh, collectively <laughs> over that time. So, it's a yeah. success. but, uh, very successful yeah. family. But um, <laughs> yeah, football was always in the blood, and St Mary's Football Club was um, pretty important because it was about community. And back in those days, St Mary's Football Club was um, you know they had um, uh, obviously the Tiwi people come in town. They had to play with a local football club, and that was started by the great Ted Egan. He's a singer and songwriter and poet. Uh, Ted was inter- instrumental with that football club. So it's been more than a football club. It's been probably more community and family for us. At what point did you think to yourself, I-, I can make a go of this or I, I can make a career out of this? Um, well, it was probably uh, – I-, I was selected in the Australian uh, – sorry, the um, 88 Bicentennial Carnival, which played in Adelaide. So all the states played and we were in the second level, but – a lot of those players are all VFL players. Back then, we were just from Darwin, local team. We had probably the only two players that were playing back then was Morris Rioli and Michael McLean, who was at the Bulldogs, and Morris was still at Richmond. And, um, yeah, it was probably back then in 88 in Adelaide. No one sort of knew who we were and, um, you know, uh, some of the teams didn't want to play against us because they thought we weren't at that level. But we ended up winning the second division anyway. But uh, it's amazing when people, you know, underestimate you. Um, but they forgot that a lot of the players were actually related or they played against. We were in season and they actually, we sort of knew each other. But, you know, teams were out of season, so, um, which gave us a bit of an edge. But uh, we sort of knew that uh, that the, the respect wasn't there from other guys, even though they were VFL players. We, we were probably in awe playing against them, but... They didn't respect us, which was one mistake you can make, you know. Mm. Yeah. What about you, JT? When did the light bulb go off in the head? That yeah, so I like, always had a dream of playing uh, in the NRL. Like I said, as a kid growing up, um, big family environment playing rugby league. So, um, but it wasn't until um, I got the probably that first training trial as an 18 year old with the Bulldogs, where I started to think. You know, uh, how I'm actually a chance of uh, making a living out of this. Uh, when I finished high school, no club, you know, wanted a bar of me. So um, that was disheartening. But I think that made me a bit more resilient and more determined to, to prove them wrong uh, as well. So I was always tarnished with being too small and couldn't tackle and they're probably right. (laughs) 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 But I was just always headstrong um, and my strength was my fitness. Um, No one would outwork me uh, on the field and um, that's how I applied when I uh, got an opportunity is um, to outrun everyone, um, out-train everyone and, you know, when I moved to Sydney as an 18-year-old, uh, 
the Jersey flag team was already well and truly settled um, at that time. So the only way I was going to break into it was to train the house down and, and that was my strength. So that's what I did. And yeah, once that sort of took off, I moved down on a training trial, um, washing cars at Pickles Auctions in, <laughs> in Western Sydney. And then, uh, yeah, uh, got a traineeship and then... They signed me for you know a, a contract uh, in 2002, a full time contract. So um, yeah, it happened extremely quickly for me. Uh, when I finished high school, yeah, I was devastated because everyone. By the time you finish high school, everyone's on you know contracts and training, and um, you know they got scholarships to go to clubs and things like that. So where I didn't have that, so I had to sort of go the the long way about it, but. You know, I just loved rugby league so much. You know, I was playing local A grade in Toowoomba at that time before I got moved down to, to Sydney with the Bulldogs. So, yeah, it wasn't until that moment where you finally get that that contract where you go, all right, now I've got my foot in the door. How do I get better? And, you know, what do I need to do to, you know, build my game to be the best that I can be? Give us an idea early in your career. You're obviously not earning a lot of money, right? How much are you thinking about investing it Using it wisely. <laughs> yeah. Well, for me, um, my first contract was 80K um, in 2002. Um, and um, my manager said, <laughs> you know, I was lucky I had good uh, support network around me with my finances. And um, I got a financial advisor straight away and they put me on a weekly allowance um, which wasn't much. How much uh, can you tell us? <laughs> uh, 300 bucks. <laughs> but uh, all my money would go into an account and uh, all the bills would get paid uh, from that. So, you know, the rent, um, all that type of stuff, you know, your phone um, and, yeah, you'd get the, the 300 bucks to sort of live off, uh, off that. Um, so... Once you start earning a bit more money, that allowance, uh, weekly allowance <laughs> went up. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was really lucky to have a, a good financial support network around me. And, um, you know, that I remember that, uh, doing that. And, you know, the more money you earned, I suppose, the easier you can spend it. But yeah, I was very lucky in that regard. Not lucky, but... It was very good for me. Um, you know, like I said, I come from a, a big family as well. So, you know, I've been able to help uh, family in different ways um, as well. So, you know, that's pretty much part of our culture really is f helping family out. Um, so, yeah, that's having that fun. I've still got that financial advisor still today uh, controlling my finances. So, um, I'll get a little bit more money now. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Michael? The, the first early days, you're not earning – Bucket loads of money. How conscious were you of using it sort of wisely? I probably wasn't conscious enough. Yeah. Um, I didn't have the greatest education, but um, I think I was more focused on football and trying to make it um, and then really didn't focus on the financial side earlier as a kid because you're trying to get in the into the seniors and, yeah, I suppose then he had tried to adapt to living in Melbourne, the weather and other things. So... Um, to me, it was a little bit of a different journey on, on my financial side. You're young, you think you're, you're a superman, you're, you're there. Um, but lucky, I, I had some real good, um, when I was there, there's still a lot of the 84, 85 guys. So there were older guys there that had their business because it wasn't fully professional. Then you could go and work uh, during the day and you had to be at a training, but you didn't get home till about 9 o'clock. So I was probably earning more money uh, doing my job. Uh, actually on the um, – they put me on my first ever job. You know, never been to Melbourne in my life. Uh, didn't really uh, understand the weather and all this stuff. And 6 o'clock in the morning, you know, you're leaving to go to your job or earlier. But um, that was sort of like my welcome to, to Melbourne. But, yeah, it was uh, – I didn't think about a lot of that stuff a little bit later on, um, probably when I had my children because, um, uh, I don't know, it wasn't about you as a – individual you know you had to obviously then you know look out for your kids and plan and i suppose it wasn't until 95 that you know sort of you hit home you know it's not about you so um uh probably in the early days i, I probably spent a lot of it and never really thought about planning for the future and I'm probably i'm playing a bit of catch up but um I'm probably like along the way um as long as you learn from it 
you know, and, and you have good people around you. So I think it was probably 95, I think, when my son came to, um, was born around then. I think that's the key to is having people around you that uh, you can trust um, because, you know, you go from most now, most days now, you go from high school mm. straight into a system yep. where, you know what, I think, uh, you know, the average age, average income for an NRL player is nearly 400 yeah. Uh, grand, but for the lower spectrum, I think they're earning still 120. Like if you're an yeah. 18, 19 year old earning that kind of coin, it's easy to just be able to blow it uh, mm. as well. So you need people around you that you can trust um, because we've all heard of those stories where, um, you know, <laughs> players <laughs> have uh, blown it or they've, you know, made a bad investment and uh, lost a lot. So, yeah, I think, like you said, yeah. you know, um, learning from those experiences having those people around you to, you know, guide you because, um, you know, most players come from a um, a low socioeconomic uh, background as well. Um, yeah. You know, our, uh, you know, I did uh, growing up in, in Brisbane yeah. and like you mentioned growing up in Darwin and, and, you know, the Tiwi Islands and that and here you are thrust into yeah. big city life. Like it's a cultural change. It's a massive change. So having those people around you yeah. that you can trust and guide you is extremely important. And, and you don't know everything about No, you like you're yeah, only a kid. Yeah, and I'm – I focus on my footy rather than yeah, the, like, and you got to understand how money works, and you know, um, it actually can destroy you if you don't use it properly, yeah, and, and uh, can be your worst enemy. But that's why it was so important later on, you know, that I had to get that support and help and good people around you that make better decisions. You know, yeah, people who are smarter yeah. than me, um, who understood money, yeah. but uh. Like you wouldn't change it for the world what you went through, what but you, did you learn? But, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, there, there comes a time, and that 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 was that moment for me, I suppose, with the the young bloke coming into the world. Just you know, you get just the the button clicks. Yeah. Up upstairs, so yeah. Who who are the make? Have you got any particular influences, financial influences, um, uh, that you can talk about over the course of that journey? Yeah, my manager, Sam, uh, you know, he's got a real estate background. Um, so that's where you know, I've invested most of uh, the money that I've earned uh, is in. You own half a townsville, Joe. <laughs> 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 Can we get a loan, Joe? <laughs> you know, We're just so, the extended family. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's um, where my money's, most of my money's gone. Yeah, I've got a small uh, share portfolio as well, which I keep an eye on. But um, it's about making your money work for you and how you can get it to work for you. I think in, in property, you know, some people um, play the short game with it or the long game and, you know, mine at the moment is with the long game with it. So obviously the property market goes up and down uh, that you can see and, and you read about it. But, um, yeah, my manager's uh, been a massive influence on me and then I suppose um, Lawrence uh, Lancini yep. in, in Townsville as well um, and another bloke, Paul uh, Gideon as well. And they were, the, they were part of the, the Stockman crew that the Cowboys picked up, um, which was successful businessmen that they got in around the boys and different <clears throat> aspects of, um, of life. So, you know, um, some own car yards, some are in the property game, uh, some were builders, you know, so if you were looking to build a house, you know, you had that person there that you could go and get advice from and, and things like that. So, yeah, I was very lucky in that regard uh, when I moved to the Cowboys that they had that system already set up. So if there was any advice that I need and, you know, these were um, – middle-aged, older men that have, you know, are successful in their own right in their field. So having that and bounce ideas off was really important to and me. And sponsors, you would have had a lot of help <clears throat> sponsors. Yeah, advice. exactly. Yeah. Sponsors, advice, and, and, you know, that crew really helped, uh, you know, guide you um, on, on what you wanted to do with your, with your money. So, yeah, they're still around there up there in Townsville. What about you, Michael? People outside, I guess, footy or that, that influenced you financially? Yeah, we had a, a board member who was at the Essel Football Club. She owned uh, a few art galleries, um, became uh, close to, uh, friends and then family, as you do. Um, and then I had a mate who was, um, he was the accountant for the RSL. He was, uh, that's when Bruce Ruxton was head of the RSL 
back then. Um, and she obviously set us up how it should the money should be funneling into a, a foundation, not a foundation, into your family trust and setting up. And we bought our first house, I think, about a year and a bit after Jake was born. Mind you, my salary wasn't the biggest back then. I think the most I ever got in the end was about 250000 Um uh, probably the last three or four years of my contract, which is, um, wasn't huge money, um, what they're getting now, but um, the demands on football is even higher and the bubble you live in, uh, media and everything else, you know, they, 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 um, they deserve that. You know, they deserve that money. I, I think uh, for players now, it's like around four fifty five hundred, just a standard contract. But yeah, they. Um, um, I said, I said, I wasn't an expert in, in accounting, or um, and I suppose that that's where I needed that leadership and helping him mature and understand that. Hang on, we got a plan for for our kids. So the trust was set up, and we bought our first house, which was fantastic. But um, like uh, as you do, you had to have a budget and. Sometimes you spend a little bit more. You need to <laughs> go away on holidays with the family, and um, but uh, you did have incentives in your contract where you got into finals or grand finals, or you know there was different parts or incentive money there. But um, like like everything, you, you, you'd see, you'd think it's flashy, but sometimes it's not. You're, you're actually working just as hard to um, you know put food on the table like anyone else, and the demands of football is different because you're emotionally, physically challenged and you come home and um, people might have thought it was a tough job, but you like I've worked during the day and then you can get home till 9, 9.30 once you finish your weights and your boxing and all that stuff and rub down and and then, you know, you got to get ready for the next day. Um, that was just as taxing, but I, I couldn't. I, I stopped working, but I was actually earning more money than I was working. But, yeah, that was probably – yeah, the start of putting a bit of a structure behind me, probably 95. How important was that, getting some structure behind yeah. fin your financial life? Oh, really important because they understood it. I, I might not have understood it really well and I'm not good at that detail stuff and that's why you get those people that you trust and um, that know what they're doing and they want to help you, they want to look after you. But um, that was a two-way street and, you know, uh, as we said, we became like family and friends as you do. And um, and then uh, obviously our second child come along, so um, we were lucky to buy our second place. I mean, they knew how the structure of how tax works and, um, and how we needed to do it and set it up. Um, obviously not living in that house, but we had to go and live in this one for, for certain reasons and um, all, all above board and how, how you utilise that. Are there any are there any piece of financial advice you might have received or or something someone said to you over the years that stuck with you that you could share with other athletes or just your people in general, I guess? I, I think as we were talking before, look, you're going to make mistakes and that's just the reality. And, and um, I think we've heard stories and players and, and you don't wish that upon anyone, but as long as you learn from it and you get good sound advice, good people you could trust, People who are actually there for you, you know, they want you to succeed, and um, and that works at life, yeah. Um, but you got to make sure you dot everything, cross everything, um, and no doubt um, you're actually going to get smarter people to give you advice, you know, stuff that you don't know. And I know what I don't know, and um, uh, we're all um, good at other things, and we're good at footy. That's what I could do, but um, I suppose that's where I got at that time. Those people, yeah, in, in my um, in my corner. Yeah, get a financial advisor, um, definitely, because like I said, you can go from you know high school, and now uh, you could be earning you know six figures as a nineteen year old. So <laughs> there's not many to many 19 year olds in the country that are earning that type of money. So um, definitely get a financial advisor and, and, and try and work out how your money can work from you for you. Um, you know, I didn't know much about that. Um, and like you said, as athletes, all you're worried about is getting your preparation right and making sure you're performing to the, you know, highest standards that you are so that, you know, come contract time, you're maximising the amount of income you can get. And, um, you know, uh, I think having someone there that can help guide you uh, with that and, you know, the average 
NRL player is 40 games. You know, that's two years. Um, so, you know, for myself, like I had a 16-year career, but I finished at 35. I've still got another 30 years in the workforce, you know, and yes, I still earned good coin um, and yes, I've invested my money, but, you know, those – boys that are starting their careers now like um you're only a an, an injury away from from an ending um so yeah i think getting a financial advisor um definitely i would be telling you know mm. any sports star to to do that um yes it's going to cost you a bit of money to do that but you know you, you want these people to make your money work for you. Um, you know, some people leave it in a bank. Um, some people put it in shares, some people, whatever. Um, but yeah, definitely what I've learned is, um, was about wealth creation. Uh, that's what you want. You know, you got, you got a family that you need to support, you know, you got investments, um, you got home loans, you got to pay down all this type of stuff. So, um, how you can, you know, help, your wealth uh, create and how you can maximise that uh, is really important. You've got to also, I reckon, because you don't have that, once you step away from the game, you don't have that support when you leave the game. Mm. And um, I know the lifespan of a, because the high turnover is about two and a half, three years for players. So especially for those guys who are probably at a low level of income and, um, and I reckon this is where the, Players Association have to be really strong at um, maybe two days a week or more to have a really strong focus on life after footy. And because as John I mentioned before, you you could be done in one year or or two years. And and what do you do? And and then you got that transition and disappointment and shame of leaving the game. You've been at that high because there's a high expectation of family and friends and you know they look after you. But that transition when you when you leave the game, I, I know I struggled a bit, but um, just with uh, that's all I sort of knew. I'd never ne never really done anything else other than than footy. But it's amazing what you do know and the skills, and no doubt with the people you meet, um, you actually know more than what you do know. But you got to tap into that stuff yeah. that you forget, and you think about oh, be, uh, I'm retired now. What do I do? What do I do with myself? Or What's the next phase? It's amazing what what opens up if you make some, you know, good choices and changes in your life. Because uh, uh, I think the football network, the rugby network. I mean, you can go anywhere in Australia, and people will know you, or there's connections with the club or business, or it might be a, your old club, but people um, who want to talk footy, and that leads to other discussions. What are you doing? So yeah, it's um, yeah. I reckon that's where I reckon it's got to come from the players that there should be more time on. For, I know they get paid good money, but they work hard for their money. But there should be a real stronger focus for life after, especially you got to think about the the guys who probably aren't on the big money as well as the guys who are just coming in. So yeah, they certainly need to take ownership of their finances. Is that the difference between the starty career and the indie career? At the start, you're not even a lot of pl players don't even think about it, right? What what where their money is, what they're doing with the money. The last three years of your career or so, you start you start to think about retirement, what am I going to do, how am I going to use my money. But I guess, I guess the important thing is rather than leaving it to the end, if you do it over the course of your career, then you can set yourself up for life, right? Yeah, exactly. And that was, um, you know, my last contract was a four-year deal and then I added a year on uh, from that. So that was 2013 and – that's when I started to put things in place uh, post footy and, um, you know, where I'm going to be uh, after I retire and, um, you know, like I said, investing well and I've got a, a small share in uh, airline, uh, it's called Skytrans uh, in far north Queensland and uh, that was with a, a really close mate of mine uh, that started the business, sold it and then retook it on in 2014 and having those discussions with him uh, about, you know, what are you thinking of doing, you know, post footy um, and I wanted to live in Townsville uh, post footy and, and uh, we had a young family there and uh, he said, you know, look, I'm going to take uh, this airline back on. Do you want to jump on board and uh, and do that? So um, yeah, uh, you know, and they're the business decisions that you that you make and start looking out for. And you know, I'm like I said, I, 
I, I don't say I'm lucky. Um, I worked hard for everything. Um, and, you know, they're the conversations that we're saying with the people that you, that you trust um, because uh, we've all heard those stories where you invest your money in, in, in something and then, boom, it's, it's gone um, because uh, people can invest a lot of money of their – playing uh, career into something and then, you know, overnight it could be gone. So, um, yeah, at the back end of your career, you're starting to think, what am I going to be doing? Uh, where are my finances going? And like I said, if you've got a financial advisor early on, uh, you can track your finances, um, you can track your shares, you can see where your money's going, you got a budget uh, of what you need to, you know, spend on, um, rent, or fuel, you know, we've got cost of living uh, through the roof, you know, and our boy, you know, mm. footy players earning a lot of a lot of money. So, um, so yeah, that back end of your career, you need to start preparing for life after uh, after footy because, like I said, you got another 30, 40 years in the in the workforce. Um, and yes, I've helped set that up, but um, you know, for those boys that have got the you know, 20, 40 games in their career, they've still got another long time and to be earning earning money. Yeah, and, and I think once you get on top of that, you actually it all balances out for you and you actually you know where you're going because you you actually gotta understand where your money is and, and uh you're in control of it. And I think that's sometimes we let slip and um and now your role you'd have to be on the board, you're talking about the accounts, what's ticked off and all that. Um, and I think if, if you get in control of, it's almost getting in control of your life, you know, football life, your, your, your financial life. Yeah. And it's amazing how quickly you can move forward and the opportunities sometimes flow from that because you, you got your shit together, you know, cause you, you know, that you got, I mean, the only person you got to trust is yourself and, you know, and that's where you got to take control of your life and you got to drive that. And that's, you got to football and, your financial side, you're going to be in control of your life. That's yeah, definitely. Cool. Like you, every tax time, like you're going through, you know, like a, how much more have I got the mortgage <laughs> to pay <laughs> down, you know, each year, you know, all that type of stuff. So, you know, you're seeing what type of income is coming in and you're seeing what type of income mm. is going out. So, like I said, it's about cre uh, that wealth creation and I think that's, you know, really important for uh, footy players is to start thinking about, you know, what am I going to do post footy? One of the one of the things that Kevin Cheedy always said, you know, uh, coming to this club, I want you to walk away with a house, at least a house. And um, um, I said, Kev, I need your house. You know, I can't afford it now. <laughs> but, um, but he was always thinking about, you know, as coaches, they're, they're more than just coaches. They're, they're, they're fathers. They're, you know, um, no matter, because um, I caught up with Kevin the other day, you know, they're father figures, so they, they want you to do well, you know, not just in your footy, so because um, they've got grannies and everything else. So um, no doubt uh, over time, you know, Kevin's still involved with the football club. He still keep, keeps in contact with his players. How are you going? You know, what are you doing? Are you going okay? You know, um, and that's a lifelong thing. So and that was one of the messages he always said, you know, I want you to leave here with a house, at least a house, you know. Well, that's a good note to end it on. Some advice from Sheeds. You can't beat that. <laughs> so thanks to JT. Thanks to Michael for joining us. And stay tuned for the next episode of Athlete's Journey winning on and off the field soon. Thanks, okay. Reedy. Really.